Hello everyone and welcome back, finally, to another episode of Let's Supreme Ghost Thief. Today we're going to do Mission 3, The Black Frog. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough so far. I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of this. This is one of my favorite campaigns ever. So um, we're just going to go right to it and uh, load up the save game at the end of the portrait, which uh, in my mind is um, one of the two missions that stand out in this campaign as being absolutely stunning. Uh, missions 2 and 5. Um, all the others are good. Uh, this one, called Tears and Sorrow, is probably not my favorite, but that is more a testament to the quality of the rest of the missions. Um, not really because this lack in quality in any, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there are a couple of things about it that makes it not my type of mission, maybe. Uh, but the quality is there. It's a good mission. It's a diff different mission from all the others. And something that I think this campaign uh, manages to do very well is to create five very distinct missions that all tie together in one common story, but they're all very unique. And uh, this mission included as well. This is more of a scary entry to the campaign. Probably the scariest out of all missions. So... Um, for those of you that enjoy that, and, and it's not to say I don't enjoy it, but it's just uh, there are a couple of things in there that I'll get to that I don't really uh, think uh, puts it up at the same level as the rest of the missions in this campaign. But anyway, we have stolen the portrait for Sir Belmont, and therefore our objective, our main objective, is to meet Belmont at the Three Heroes Inn and give him the portrait. So that means that we're back in the city uh, that we were in in Mission 1. Um, and then once all is done, we have to leave the city. So that's it. Uh, for now. There are going to be adjustments and alterations and additions to the objectives here. And one of them is going to be a forced kill objective, which is one of the main reasons why I think this mission drops a little bit in quality. I don't like forced kills. Uh, maybe if there's one kill, that makes sense. But if there's multiple, and there's as many as ten in this mission, then... That changes things for me, because I am a ghoster. I, I like the game because you don't have to deal damage, you don't have to kill. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just go ahead and start playing and, uh, and see what we have to do as we get along here. So we start in the western end of the city, and you see the circumstances are very different. It's foggy. It's dark. It doesn't have the same tone and atmosphere at all. Our apartment is just a few streets to the south here, so we're in the far west in one of the plazas there. There's nothing of interest really in here for now. Let's go ahead and make a real save before we... There we go. Uh, there's not much of interest... What's going on here? I must stay sharp. Whatever you say, Sly Fox. Okay. So... There's nothing really of interest in the streets in terms of uh, valuables. There are some equipment and some food items that I will point out. Uh, there's only one piece of loot in the entire mission. And that's not in the streets, it's underground. There are a total of... 10 watchdogs. They're Emily's, Emily Victor's watchdogs. Uh, I believe there are four stationary ones and six patrollers. No, there are five patrollers and five stationary ones. Uh, three of the station or three of the patrollers will pass us right from right to left here in the front. So we have to follow them and head down to the inn. Once we actually end up getting rid of all the dogs, which is what the kill objective is going to include. I will take my time a little bit more thoroughly around the streets, but for now I just want to do the required steps. So we're only carrying lockpicks and the portrait, and we have nothing of weapons besides the sword and the blackjack. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and see where what the lay of the land is here.
Okay, that was pretty easy. Good. This plaza right here is the most difficult part in the mission because there are five patrollers that all have that as part of their route, but all the routes are pretty long. So that shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Let's head upstairs to the room and see what we have to do there. Okay. This room seems to be trashed. You have blood on the floor. I don't know if that is still from the messenger from mission one, but anyway. The box here, which we have to pick open. We have two things. First, Belmont's letter. Let's go ahead and read that. Garrett. Frightening things have happened here since you stole the picture. Your action has awakened dark forces long forgotten by the Builder, and they swept the city to our great misfortune. In fact, I'm not the only one interested in the portrait. There's another antagonist, a woman, a cruel and power-hungry female, skillful in black magic. I and the majority of the town survivors have been forced to flee to a safe place that is kept secret to avoid her terrible wrath. Hopefully, by the time you read this, we will be safe. That woman is looking for you, Garrett, so be careful. She wants to get that picture at any price. That witch is evil and crazy. Find me and give me the painting as we agreed. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the location of our hiding place. You need to find it yourself. That woman or her henchman might find the parchment before you do. I do not want to take the risk that they or their creatures might find us. Therefore, my following comments will be some, uh, somewhat enigmatic. Use this key to find a clue in a place nearby that only an experienced thief like you can see and reach. I did not have much time to hide it, so you should not have much difficulty finding it. Once you find that clue, you will be on the path that leads to me and your money. The rest is up to you, Garrett. I rely on your insight, Sir Belmont. So, that changed the objectives. So, notice that going to the inn and delivering the painting has now disappeared. Instead, we have um, three different objectives. Even leaving the city, uh, the way it was written initially, is gone. So it says now, this place doesn't look very safe. It's time to find Belmont and give him the portrait as soon as possible. Once all is done, leave the city by the docks. You should find a boat and escape far away from this place. So this is a more specific way of leaving the city now. It would be wise to go back to your flat and get some supplies. And that's the first thing we're going to do right now. We have to get a rope arrow in order to find uh, the next key. So that's what we're going to do. So here we have Belmont's key number one. That we will need to access the second key. Uh, the letter I'm going to drop back because we don't need that anymore. There. It's as good as we can do it. Let's head out here. Uh, I didn't see it because I ran through this plaza very quickly, but if you look up to this uh, balcony right away, Basil, uh, Emily's henchman, is actually standing here looking down. He's gone now, but there is something that we can read from him. Milady. We took the small town. The Horde has searched the area, but alas, that dishonest Sir Belmont and that thief Garrett were not found. I and the Horde have searched everywhere and found nothing. I feel so miserable. I beg your pardon. What should I do, milady? Should we withdraw or continue? So this is then Basil's note. Why he crumpled it up and left it on the on that patio, I don't know, but uh, there it was for us to read anyway. So we have to return Belmont's key, the first one, well, all three actually. go ahead and make a real save. But we're going to have to do that once we are done with all of them. OK. 
Okay. In here, there should be um, a single broadhead arrow behind the counter. And then in the storeroom, this is a pickable locker and uh, there are three more broadheads there. Broadheads are okay against the dogs. I prefer the sword. Okay, now we have to be careful here. We have to head south once we get out into the plaza and go back to our apartment. Okay, this is going very easy so far. I hope none of the dogs are stuck. That would be a very, very bad situation. They, they, I've never seen them stuck, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. All right. So Emily and Basil have been here. That's why it looks trashed. Uh, and in this room, we can find uh, a scouting orb. There, a flash bomb, a fruit, a healing fruit if you want it. Uh, you can find a broadhead, or three broadhead arrows, no, five broadhead arrows, three rope arrows, which uh, are in the chest, and uh, that's it. There's also a letter. Garrett, I hope that by the time you read this letter, you will still have the option of not turning over the portrait to Sir Belmont. I know that he offered you a good price. I have nothing to give you but one warning. Destroy the portrait. This picture belong or brings only death and suffering. Alas, I doubt that this warning will be enough to stop you from fulfilling the contract for which you were hired. Garrett, you are deep into a very dangerous story. I set the hoard on this small town, and it will check every corner of this town to find the painting. My fierce and stubborn black dogs are good at finding things. It will be difficult to escape. I like you, Garrett. I would be sorry if something bad happened to you. Please, leave and let us settle this matter. Belmont and I. You need have nothing to do with it. Emily Victor. P.S. Please excuse me, but one of my dogs has urinated on your bed. It probably liked your odor. Okay. So there's proof of that. Alright, so all we need really are the rope arrows. And I might have been mistaken, they might actually be in here. Yes. And those are the broadheads. Um... So that's all we need to take, really, to check off this objective. And that's really all we need. Uh, we have to take something, and since we need rope arrows, even though we only need one, um, that's what we have to settle with. Out in this little plaza here, we have three apples. There are two in this little yard, and I think one more over here. I point out fruits because they can heal in Thief 2. Let me just check to see if we're safe here. So here are two of the dogs. And here is one of the other three. Okay. None of them give first alerts, which means we're in a good place. So I'm going to save it here. We have to head up here. Okay, there are the other two. Good. Okay, none of them are stuck.
Oh. <clears throat> that was not good. I think we should be able to drop down here without using the rope. So this X is the hint that this window actually leads to the next place where Belmont left information for us. In here, we have a slow fall potion, and uh, we have another letter, and another key, and a fruit. Belmont's letter two. Garrett, good, you found it. Now find the house of the leader of the city. The key that I gave you will open a previously inaccessible area. In that cache, you'll find another key. Just to be on the safe side, I won't tell you what it will open, but, I, but I'm sure you will discover that for yourself. And then you'll be at your gates, where all is peace and silence, Sir Belmont. Okay. So this one will drop back. Approximately at the same spot there. That one of the dogs heard. Alright, so we have to go back up here. That is not what I wanted to do. <sighs> what I wanted to do was relock the window. I think we can drop to that slanted ladder, actually. Oh. We might not be able to. dog right down here, stationary one. Got to be careful for him and wait for the patrollers to pass. Here they come. Alright, so we can slide past here. You almost can't see him, because, well you can't actually see him from here. Now you can see him. Barely. So the second letter talked about the leader of the city, which obviously is the mayor. So this is where we'll find the next key. And that will be upstairs. Here you have another X in the ceiling. <sighs> OK. 
Okay, we got a rope arrow up here. And here's Belmont's key number three. We lock that, and we're good to go. Now, there's no letter for us here. But what Belmont said was that they were in a safe place, and um, that we had to figure out where they were located. If you remember back to mission one, there was um, a manhole in the cemetery that you couldn't access, you couldn't even frob it, you couldn't even try to open it. That's where we need to go right now. I just want to make sure that I follow the dogs and don't run into them on the way there. There they are. So this is the end of their patrol loop. So once they head back, I can I can follow. There we go. There's another stationary dog right to the left here. But we should be able to stay out of his view for now. There he is. We should be dark pretty much all along here. There we go. Now we can head back behind the chapel like before, or like in mission one. And now we can access the cemetery and that's where the third key works. Right here. There we go. Come on, Garrett. So this is the townspeople's hiding spot with Belmont as their leader. So it's actually a cool little place. I like this uh, this hideout, the way it's designed. No weapons here. And that actually means that when we pass through the gate, uh, they will take whatever weapons we have. When we go back out, we'll retrieve them automatically. <coughs> All right, we'll just head through here. And this footlocker is a healing potion, and I think there's another healing potion too somewhere. Yeah, back here in the corner. And there's nothing else of interest except for Belmont himself. Well, Garrett, do you have the painting? Put it here on the table. Keep us safe. Grant us hope. Takes us when we lie down for our ways to live again. Let's do that. Still, I have a favor to ask of you. Can you help us get out of the city? Our only hope to escape from this nightmare is to reach the wharf where we can board a boat. It would be helpful if you could clear the path by killing those vicious black dogs. Also, alas, the gate to the wharf is closed. This key on the table is one of the two keys needed to open the gate. I'm afraid the second key is lost, but I'm sure a man like you will find another means to open this door. 
Okay, so now we have two more objectives. One is unlock the big door to the dock so the city dwellers can leave the town by sea. And the second one is kill all the creatures so the citizens can flee safely. There are ten creatures, they're all dogs, and um, they have to be killed without noticing us. We are allowed by supreme rules to kill the creatures here because it ex it's explicitly told in the objective. But we cannot alert them and we cannot leave any other evidences of um, the thieves passing in the process. So we have to adhere to all the other rules as well. Uh, here's a purse of 1000 gold. Once we take that, it checks off that we have uh, sold the portrait to Belmont. And this is the Wharfgate control key that we have to use, but we have to return it here as well. Nowhere is really safe anymore. Let's go ahead and leave. So here we got our weapon back, our rope arrows. Come board. We didn't actually open that door, he did, so we don't have to close it. Back up to the cemetery. And let's <laughs> close the manhole or lock it rather. So now we have to start killing the dogs. And there are a couple of tricks to this, so I'm going to make a real safe before I start explaining. Uh, all the dogs, if unaware, will die with an overhead sword slash. I think we should be safe over right here. I'm not 100% on it, but I think so. So, I always kill the two patrollers that we just saw first. The problem is that when you kill one, any other dog can't be too close because they will hear the actual flash. The second point, which is very important, is that once they die and fall to the ground, uh, they seem to be emitting some kind of gas or odor. And it seems like other dogs can notice that. So if the second patroller comes along after we've killed the first one, he will smell it and he will make a first alert. He will actually even do a little search hunt maneuver. So I, I guess it would even bust regular ghost. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to kill one. Okay, we're safe here. Good. So you notice that they patrol together when I was over on the left. But now, once I stood here and waited, only one of them came along. That's good. So they get split up like that because they, they, the engine turns off the patrol if they're too far away and all that. It's difficult to manipulate, but this always happens, So and this is good. So we have to kill one, then we have to move his body away from the scene. Uh, while we're carrying the body, the dogs can't sniff it. But whenever we put it down on the ground, it can't be close to any other dog, because then we will get a first alert or a second alert. So we have to kill one, move the body, then go back to the same spot, kill the second, and then move the first body back to this location in order to avoid any busts. So I'm going to wait for the first dog to come back here. She did. This, however, was not successful because there's a blood pool here, and that is evidence of our action. So we have to do this over until we don't get blood. <laughs> We also have to make sure that we hit the dog. Okay. Hmm. 
There we go. Now the blood pool went away right away. So we have to return this body to this location. In the meantime, though, I will move it over here. so that we can safely kill the other one. Problem is that I might be too far away to have triggered his patrol now. Nope. Was that him? I thought I heard him, but... Good. Great. There is the other dog that's stationary. That's right around this corner. But he is not close enough to hear it or sniff it. He must be just... Uh, just a few feet away from the distance because... Um, he is pretty close. So let's go back and get the other... Or the first body and place that in the corner. I also noticed that the second slash did not produce any blood, so we're good there. That wasn't really the way he was laying. There. That's close enough. Okay. Good. Now we are safe to roam around the streets a little bit in this area. So, what we have is a water arrow, a single water arrow in this fountain, if you're interested in picking up those. We also have... Do we have something else? Yeah, we have two broadhead arrows as well in the same fountain. In the grocery store. You have two carrots, two cucumbers, and if we close the window, three apples. There's nothing in this. In the armory, there is... should be... <laughs> yeah, two broadheads as well behind the counter. Okay. Let's make another real save and move on. We're going to head into Irvin's sister's house now, if you remember that from Mission 1. There's one more dog, dog here. He will attack, attack a guard up there first. I don't know if he's actually attacking him, or if it's just a part of the script. In this footlocker you can find five apples. And if we head up here, you'll see that he's a little bit inconveniently placed for us. Right there. So instead, I like to jump up here and mantle up. Not like that. <laughs> if 
Stand here on an overhead swing, should do the trick. That left blood. There we are. The blood disappeared that time. Good. Three dogs down, seven to go. The next three are usually the worst ones to do, or the next two, I should say, and you'll see why. Okay. I'm gonna head over here first. The other stationary dog is in the distance, and he can't see us here. That's why I'm a little bit careful. Okay, in the tower, you can find two more broadheads right behind the table on the floor. And then in this apartment, up the ladder, you can find a fruit on this table. Nothing else of interest. Okay. I'm not gonna... Well, this car... This dog looks strangely placed right now. I hope this will work out for us. We're not gonna kill him now. If we do, the three patrolling guards down here will sniff him out and alert. Instead, we're gonna take care of them first. And I don't really know where the other guards or dogs are right now. There's one. We have to kill them without alerting any of the other patrollers. They all have the same route, so they might be close, like they are. See that? Okay. I think we should be able to do the first one without problems. He's stuck on the fountain. Sometimes one of the dogs do that. Okay. We got him, but it left blood again. Excellent. Okay, good. So you see that if we hold him, they will not... This is actually pretty perfect. One of them gets stuck on the fountain and then he will be a little bit delayed. So we're still carrying that one dog even though it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna bring him back to the back alley where we started the mission, drop him there, and then try to kill one of the other dogs. Excellent. Wow. This went a lot smoother than before. That is for sure. But I'll take it. Two dogs of the patrollers down, one more patroller to go. Stuck on the fountain again. Let's free him up. Okay, left some blood there. Perfect. 
Great. Now let's pick up the other corpses, place them back, and then all the patrollers in the entire mission have now been killed. And that's a good thing for us, because we can freely roam the streets now. All the remaining ones are stationary. We have killed six so far, four more to go. So the rules talk about not busting any other rules than the ones that are explicitly uh, described in the objectives. But we will end up dealing damage here, but that is excused, because that's implied. When you need to kill something, you need to deal damage. But other than that, nothing else has been busted right now. And again, that's not a bust. So let's go up now and kill the one stationary dog at the top of the stairs. Progress so far warrants a real save. This one is a little tricky. Don't go over the pipe, whatever you do. I've not been able to be successful at that. Plus, you'll nudge him out of the out from the wall, and that's not allowed. Stand here, draw the sword, and um, once you're ready to let go of the overhead, crouch and lean forward quickly. See if I can do that. Just like that. And I don't see any blood, which means that we are good to go. Excellent. Three more to go then. Let's actually head this way. I'll show you a few more pickups. In the sailor's house, you have three broadheads in this footlocker. In the pool here should be two more water arrows. And in the shed over here, there's another water arrow in the bucket. If you need those things. Let's see, if we head into this apartment, I think there's a couple of food items in here. Yeah, there's a cheese, and should be a loaf of bread. Yeah, right here. Let's head upstairs and take a left. And this room is a fruit in this foot locker. If you're interested in that, we can't leave out to the balcony. Okay. Let's jump through this window. Here are um, three broadheads. And then we can leave through this window. <gasps> another dog in this apartment. This dog is actually chasing a mouse or a rat. So he's already alerted. Or at least he's act acting as such. We have to be a little bit careful here. This dog will actually need four overhead swings, but as long as he stays facing the way he is now and doesn't attack us, We should be good to go.
five overhead swings it took. He never turned around, and he never indicated that he had alerted to us. He was already alerted. We didn't cause any further alerts, so we're all good there as well. It's the only way to kill him. Okay, I don't think there's anything of interest right here either. Just check. No. It's a little bit difficult to get back up on that. That ledge, I don't know if we can actually drop to the ground here, maybe. Let's see if we can do that. <coughs> we couldn't. Uh, we might be able to drop actually into the pool. Yeah, good. Okay, I think we can pick up a few more items in this. <laughs> yep, in this apartment. Uh, one cheese, two carrots, and a loaf of bread. There's nothing else. And I think that is it for pickups. At least in terms of the southern part of the map. Through here is another dog that you can see. However, we can pick the lock on this door or open it, I'm not sure, but he will alert to us doing that. So we can't get him that way. We actually have to go over the wall in a different manner. Let's see, let me do another real save. So, I actually forgot to show you a couple of things up here. <gasps> Three apples and one loaf in this apartment. And that's it. In the tower here is another readable, which will that we'll go in and have a look at. Oh, builder, builder, builder. We cannot get out of here. The city is under siege from all sides. What will become of me? Oh, forgive me, builder, that I did not worship you for a year. Do not leave me, I beg you. Flint was killed in the first attack by these horrible creatures, and I do not know what to do. What will become of me? All alone in the middle of this hell. I don't know where the mayor and the citizens are hiding. Before hiding, the mayor said, his hand on my shoulder and with a sickening, fatherly tone, Go, my brave man, and protect this city with all your courage and loyalty. Loyalty, my ass. When my life is at risk, there's only one thing I know, every man for himself. And on top of that, that bastard took the key to open the wharf door. Builder. Sorry, I should have never said that. I am a coward. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh my, how do I leave this city now, now that the wharf door is blocked? It was the only access that could have led me to safety. I could have jumped on a boat and then said goodbye to this city and those horrific hellish creatures that came out of nowhere. Oh, Builder, save me. I promise to worship you until the end of my days. Okay. There are a couple of items upstairs. Uh, five broadheads in this footlocker and then in the apartment across the street one cheese three apples and one loaf of bread and I don't think anything else <sighs> this is the only guy that's not a not dead still maybe he's got gone crazy okay so 
now we have to open the wharf doors or the gate. And uh, that's going to lead to our first supreme bust, unfortunately. This mission is not supremable because of this very situation that comes up. The dog at the end here, let me actually show them show him to you. Cuz he's standing right outside of the gate door. Right there. When we open the gate doors, he will alert. He will give a first alert to the sound of the door opening. Uh, granted, we have to kill him. So if we were able to kill him before opening the doors, then he wouldn't alert, of course, and we wouldn't bust Supreme. But there's no way to kill this dog. We are supposed to kill him from behind. Because we can go out to the docks and uh, kill him from behind going through the gate from the outside. But uh, that, of course, is after he is alerted to the gate opening. So if there was a fire arrow or something that could kill him from the outside, then we would be good here, but there's nothing. One broadhead won't kill him in one swoop, and he'll alert, and we will bust Supreme from that. Trust me, I've tried different ways and maneuvers of rope arrowing past him from the side, throwing mines at him. But he alerts to everything, so it will be a bust either way. And I feel that the, the uh, most excusable type of bust would be a first alert to the gate opening. Especially since he's going to die anyway. So there's the door here. Then move in. He can't see us from a little bit of a distance, so we've got to be a little careful. Up on this ledge are two mines, if you collect weapons. And uh, even though you can't see it, this archer actually has three broadheads uh, on his back that you can take if you highlight it properly. Let's head upstairs. Okay. Down this corridor we have a couple of broadheads. I think there are five in total. No, that was one and then there are four more here. So five in total that way. Here are two more mines. I don't think there's anything in the safe. No, it's empty. We don't need to pick up anything here or read anything. I don't think that any of those parchments are readable, no. Wharf gate control. This is the door that answers to wharf gate control key. And this footlocker is a noisemaker arrow. This door is pickable. Okay. I was mistaken. This is what the dog actually alerts to. Picking of that door. That's what it is. And this opens the wharf gate. And that checks off the second objective. So again, unlocking that door, there's no key for it. We have to pick the lock. That alerts the dog downstairs. What you heard was the first alert. There's nothing we can do to circumvent that. We can't get into the room any other way. And we have to get in there in order to complete the mission. Too bad, but that's how it is. Supreme is unfortunately busted.
Okay, so we have two dogs left to kill. But I'm going to go ahead and return all of the keys right now. Because we are done with all of them. That we have to do for Supreme. If we waited long enough here, we would hear the settling remark from that dog. When they alert to doors opening or lockpicks, they take a long time to settle. One thing I didn't show you is that there's a single water arrow in this pool as well. Okay, so the wharf gate control key is the first one we have to return. We have to do them in backwards order of how we pick them up. Some of the some of the people in here, especially a little kid and uh, a few of the others as well, alert to something. I don't know what it is, if it's something I do, but obviously they're not hostile, so it shouldn't be a problem for us. There's a door around here that I forgot to close. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we can lock this door now or this manhole for the last time, and then we can return Belmont's key number three. And that key was at the mayor's house. And we need key number two. Wow, that is definitely a bug. When I unlocked, probably when I unlocked this hatch, the third key suddenly disappeared from my inventory and respawned up here. Wow, that's definitely a bug that nobody picked up during beta testing. Okay. Well, anyway, now it's definitely back, but we have to get the rope. I just got to check something. I don't know if I forgot to close one of the doors here. I think I did. Nope, I didn't. Yeah, 
How many of these dogs are going to be a part of every mission from this point on? This one we have to unlock with the first key, and then put key number two back here. <laughs> then lock this with key number one. Make sure that's properly locked, and then we have to go back down and see if we can <coughs> cannot do it like that. Just do the safe method. And then finally, we can return the first key. Now, let's see, I want to bring a crate up there. I take, usually use this crate. Because I need that to get to the dog that we saw in the alley with the trash cans. Not to kill the dog, but actually to get over the wall afterwards and kill the last dog, rather. Let's drop this back here. Good enough. And then head out here. <laughs> Here's the dog I talked about earlier. If we go over this little fence like I just did. We can drop down without him alerting. Like I said before, opening the gate here or opening that door will alert him. Good. Nine out of ten dogs killed. There are Two carrots and three loaves of bread in this alley as well. Now what we have to do is go back up. We can't mantle up there, I don't think at least. <sighs> and in order to go get to the docks without passing the dog, that we have left to kill. We have to jump up here. No. The crate's got to be a little bit further away. <laughs> there we go. Head up here. The sound disappears for a portion of the time. Oh, we have to actually drop onto this wall. Conveniently placed. Read this. Garrett, you have the portrait of Sir Belmont. It was a mistake, but we could not prevent it. He will come to the, to the island with his mercenaries, taking what he has wanted for many years. We assume that you have already heard of the Black Frog. We are sure that you have read the writings of Sir Garavaldi and become aware of his existence of this artifact. However, this object is more valuable than you think, but not in the sense of monetary worth. The Order wishes to recover the Black Frog, and is ready to offer more than you could get from anyone in Dayport. We dislike dealing with you on a monetary level, but if that is the price to pay, we have to accept it. You know that our interests are never based on a sudden impulse, and this glyph is of the highest importance to the Order. Garrett, go to the island and bring us back the glyph. Bring us back the Black Frog. It is in the form of a harmless object, a golden framed oval mirror. Be careful, Keeper Gerald. Okay, so it seems like Belmont does not have our best interest at heart. He wants to get the Black Frog, 
at any cost. Now we can kill the last dog from behind. And that checks off that objectives or that objective 10 for 10 in terms of dogs killed. So that means four out of five objectives are checked. The only thing now is to leave, which we have to do through here. But we have to return the crate first. That is required for Supreme. <laughs> oh, my goodness, what happened there? No blood, we're good. Okay. I love this little scene. <laughs> the dogs didn't actually kill him, the light post did. Place this back storeroom around here, I should say. And then all we have to do is leave. Pretty quick and easy this mission if you know how. Killing the dogs is the biggest problem. Although we took a supreme bust, we only took one, and it was a small one since this dog ended up getting killed. So that's it. Tears and sorrow. Perfect thieved, but not perfect supremed, unfortunately. Okay, let's look at the stats. Total time, 52 minutes, 40 seconds. Found 1,000 loot out of 1,000. Pockets picked 0 out of 0. Locks picked 2. Backstabs, 9. Knockouts, 0. 9. I'm pretty sure there were 10. Oh yeah, I guess the one dog that is hunting the rat, maybe he doesn't count, because there are 10 dogs. Yeah, there are 10 dogs total. Damage dealt, 300. So that's 30 for each dog, that makes sense. Damage taken, 0. Healing taken, 0. Innocence killed, none. And others killed, 10. So there we have it. Iron Beast destroyed zero, disabled zero, secrets found zero out of zero. Campaign totals time so far, four hours, 13 minutes, 54 seconds. Loot so far, 5350. And total damage dealt 300 and received zero. So that's it. That's a perfect thief of Tears and Sorrow. We busted Supreme uh, one time. And that was when we picked the door to the wharf gate control room. That alerted the dog underneath, in the alley underneath. He heard the, the lockpicks, and that's a bust to Supreme. Anyway, uh, pretty decent mission. Uh, not great in any way, but definitely not bad. Uh, entertaining, different from the other ones. Uh, the next two missions are top-notch. Mission 4 is such a fun one to ghost. I hope you guys are are planning to return for that one. It might take a while, it might be one of the longest missions I've done so far, and that says a lot given the missions I've, I've recorded up until this point. But um, I'll see you back then for mission four, The Lady and the Thief. Uh, until that time, bye bye, have a good night.